Hello and welcome to the tutorial on how to utilize the UCS function inside Cabinet Vision. This will be going through a basic UCS and will add a part to an assembly with given rules. The ability to create and modify UCSs is a feature of Solid Advanced and Solid Ultimate. Today we will be working within Solid Ultimate. First things first, I'm going to ensure that I have created a part for the purpose of this demonstration. I'll be adding in an adjustable shelf nose. This will be placed in the assembly category. Make sure this part is also implemented into your material schedule so that it has a material assigned to it. Returning to the splash screen, we will now go to Utilities and to the User Created Standards function. The user created standards menu features buttons along the top that let you create, copy and delete UCSs, as well as having increase and decrease priority buttons. When we create a UCS, Cabinet Vision will read them in a descending order, starting at the top, then moving down the list. This means that we can create a UCS that turns on a function, but if further down the list we have another UCS that turns the function off then the UCS lower down on the list will have been the last to take effect. UCSs can be turned on or off with the logo of the light bulb by selecting the UCS first and then pressing this button. The logo to the right of the light shows us the type of UCS. The description complements this. Such as here, a chain link is then described as a link in the description and this is repeated also for the gear icon. If a UCS had public variables that could be modified, they would also appear here. Since we are only creating an introductory UCS, we will not use this function. We will then go to the top left hand corner and create a new UCS. We will be creating a UCS that will add an adjustable shelf nose when the shelf is over a particular value or length. Once we create a new UCS, the following dialog box is shown. We have advancing categories listed along the top, as well as back, next, cancel and finish function buttons down below. The first tab here is listed general. We are going to add our name. We will name this UCS Add Adjustable Shelf Nose. This UCS will add our freshly created part when particular parameters are met. We are going to select the type down below. We have three options available. Add, link a part, modify a part, and delete a part. We'll be adding a part. On the right hand side, scroll down to find the item that we created earlier. We will click Adjustable Shelf Nose. We will then advance with the Next button. This takes us to the Link To tab. It's asking what we would like to link our part to. We can link it to a Assembly, Opening, Part or Operation. We are going to link this to a part. Being that we want this to configure itself with the adjustable shelf, we'll pick the adjustable shelf part on the right. We will now use the next button to advance through the top tabs. Stopping on the construction method tab. This is a filter we can apply so that our UCS will only activate when the given construction method is ticked. Leaving this off means this filter won't be applied. We will now advance to the Conditions for Adjustable Shelf. This means there is conditions on the adjustable shelf which is the part we are relating our shelf nose to. Since we want this to apply under certain parameters, we will try and achieve the following. We want it so that when the shelf is over a particular value, this shelf nose will be added. Therefore, we are going to tick Length, then under Operation, is greater than, and our value will be 600. Therefore, 
when our adjustable shelf length is over or greater than 600, our shelf nose will then be activated. The next tab is where we select the values for our adjustable shelf nose. The width will be 40 millimeters. This is the default length I would like it to be. The length is where we will link it up to the following. Since we are adding our adjustable shelf nose to an adjustable shelf, the adjustable shelf is now referred to as the parent. So in the length, we would like the length value to be equal to the parent's length with a plus value of zero. This will mean it will entirely be the length of the adjustable shelf. Advancing through the last menu, we will click Finish. We can now see our UCS appearing in our user created standards list. It is listed above, add adjustable shelf nose. It is the first in the order. It tells us what part it relates to and it gives a description. The description is generated based on how we advanced through the previous menu. So this states links adjustable shelf nose to adjustable shelf. We will now enter a job in which we will place a cabinet, increase the adjustable shelf to over the size of 600 millimeters and view the reports inside the cabinet to see our part appearing. The way we configured the UCS means that this will not appear graphically. It will simply appear in the reports. To add this part so we physically see it, we will need to go back through the UCS configuration and configure it so that it will appear graphically. Double clicking on our existing UCS, advance through to the adjustable shelf nose values tab. We can identify that down on the left hand side here, we have the display graphically button. Once ticked, the following options become available. We have a line of configuration for the X, Y and Z position, as well as the X, Y and Z rotation. The information I used is shown here. To best understand the X, Y and Z position, as well as their rotation, I would suggest utilizing our object tree video to gain the understanding on what these each mean in reference to parts and cabinets. I have assigned the X position to be the parent's width. The Y is a fixed value of zero and the Z position is the parent's depth. I have also rotated it in the Y axis so it sits on its end to form a nose on the shelf. Let's have a look at how this applied in the cabinet. From this perspective, we can tell that the shelf nosing has applied to the front of the adjustable shelf. However, the shelf being still the full depth of the cabinet means that our part has placed in collision with the doors. We will now create an additional UCS, which when the shelf is over 600 millimeters, it will reduce its depth to account for the shelf nosing part. Going to the face, then user created standards, We'll go up to the top left hand corner and create a new UCS. We will name the UCS the following. We will then select modify a part and select the adjustable shelf since this is what we would like to modify. Selecting next, we will advance through the menus until we reach the adjustable shelf conditions. Much like the previous UCS, we need to select the length is greater than and select 600, meaning that it is engaged when the length is greater than 600. We now have this new menu called adjustable shelf values. This is asking us how we would like to modify the given part. We will tick width under parameter. Under how to modify, we will change it to adjust by and then under value minus 16.5, which is the thickness of our adjustable shelf nose. Selecting finish, we can then go back to the job to see this in effect. From the end view, we can see here that the shelf now that it is over 600 millimeters 
has both added the adjustable shelf nose and minus the width of the shelf so that it sits properly inside the cabinet. We'll also go to plan view and drag this to be under the 600mm specified in our parameters. We can see here that not only is the shelf nose gone, but the shelf is back to its original width. We have successfully created a UCS that added a part into the job. This then went on to adjust the shelf width for that part. In this video we have learnt how to create a basic UCS, add parts into a job within set parameters, and then modify one of those items. You can take this and apply it to many different scenarios. Retry the same method today, but substitute in different parts. You will then be able to achieve many different results utilising user created standards. I hope you've been able to take away many items that you'll be able to implement into your own use of Cabinet Vision. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial in Cabinet Vision and please make sure to check our YouTube channel for other tutorials.